pretty close mm -hmm. to Aquabog. We are probably around uh, 15 minutes away, so we're not very far at all. And the Quag Wildlife Refuge is a 305 mm -hmm. acre nonprofit nature preserve. So if you love to go hiking, if you love to explore and look mm -hmm. for wild animals, mm -hmm. this is a great place to visit. So our mission is to promote environmental education, and we do a lot of teaching both virtually and out in the forest. Sometimes we'll bring our animals with us to libraries and schools. And this is where we're located on, of course, on a map of New York State. But if you zoom in to Long Island, we are right on the South Fork of Long Island. I'm in our nature center building today, and it is closed to the public right now, but we have some a lot of really cool animals in here that I have some pictures of, and we're going to meet lots of animals today too. And again, if you love to go hiking, this is a great place to visit. If you combined all of our trails, we would have seven miles of hiking trails. So there's something new to see every time you visit. And our trails are open every single day of the year from sunrise to sunset. It's always free to visit at the refuge. So you can come at any season, you can come with your family and, and uh, come for a little hike, which would be really fun just to see some wild animals, maybe amphibians and frogs. We've been seeing a lot of snapping turtles in the pond, which is very exciting. And then these are some of our animals that we take care of. Uh, we have raptors and possum, a groundhog, a red fox, and all of those animals are permanently injured wildlife. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And if you have any questions throughout the program, I'm gonna open up our group chat. If you'd like, you can type in a question for me or we can even save questions till the end. Um, but I'm really excited to talk to you all today about birds of prey. And birds of prey are animals that are hunters. They're carnivores and they have some really cool things in common with each other. So they have a curved beak, they have talons, just like actually this painting of an eagle behind me. Eagles are birds of prey. So they have that curved beak, like I was saying, talons, which are really good for catching their prey. And of course, because they are birds, they can fly. Most of them come out during the day, but some birds of prey come out at night. We'll meet a few of those animals and you might hear one hooting a lot. <laughs> So birds of prey are also called raptors. And there are five different, almost like families in the birds of prey. So we talked a little bit about eagles, right? There's bald eagles, golden eagles. Then there's owls. Those are the nocturnal birds of prey. Hawks, just like red-tailed hawks and uh, you know, red-shouldered hawks. Then we have falcons. And does anyone know the last type of bird of prey? So we've got eagles, hawks, falcons, owls, and there's a really tricky category of birds of prey that not everyone thinks about. It starts with a V and they are vultures. So vultures are considered birds of prey too. So today we're gonna meet three different types of raptors or birds of prey. And when I bring them out, I'll actually be wearing uh, a glove. So this is a glove that's called a gauntlet. It's made out of leather and our birds are trained to sit on the glove and in front of an audience also, you know, in, uh, in our virtual world right now, they're, they're happy sitting in front of the computer. And this is to protect my hands from their sharp talons. And it is cool. So this is nice and big because I have a bigger bird to bring out, but when I have a small bird, it's a bit smaller. And around our bird's ankles, it's called uh, a jess and anklets. So to keep them safe, it's almost like how you would walk a dog. Uh, they have a collar and a leash. And when we take them out, because our animals are permanently injured, they would get hurt if they flew around or some of them can't fly. So to keep them safe, we have them sitting on our glove and sitting in front of people. They have a leash and jesses. 
So every time I bring out a new bird, it might just take me a minute to go off to the side and get our first bird. But are you guys ready for the first one? All right. So our first bird is our smallest bird. Okay, so thank you for your patience. This is our Eastern Screech Owl. Can you guys see him up close? I'll hold him nice and close to the camera so you can see him. They are very cute. Eastern screech owls are owls that live all around Long Island. So this is a type of owl that we or you guys might even have in your backyards. So take a closer look. They are a smaller species of owl. And these guys are built for camouflaging in their habitat. So they look just like tree bark. I'll hold him a little bit closer so you can see how their feathers are called plumage. Their plumage helps them camouflage or blend right into their habitat. They would love to live in an oak tree, in pine forests. And Eastern screech owls are full grown at this size. So he won't get any bigger. He's full grown. He's probably around six or seven years old. And if I stand back a little more, you can see just how tiny he is, right? He's about the size of my hand. So Eastern screech owls, uh, they are in the middle of the food chain. If we think about when they wake up at night, they are an owl that will come out at night and they are hunters. Like we said, they're predators and they have really sharp talons. You can see his little talons and a sharp curved beak. Can you guys see his beak if I hold it up to the screen? And he, he moved it a little bit for you. Those help him hunt at night, but because he is so small, another type of owl might be a predator for this owl. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So this type of owl, the screech owl, is hunting for mice and bugs like moths. They will especially love to eat small rodents. So mice, maybe moles and voles in the wild. And owls do something really cool at night. They have excellent hearing. So they're using their hearing and their vision to hunt. And these feathers right here, you can see my finger pointing to them. Those are actually not his ears. His ears are underneath all of these feathers on the side of his head. So these are called ear tufts. They're a type of feather to make him look bigger and more intimidating. Also, it breaks up his shape if he's sitting in a tree. So it helps him camouflage. But these feathers are not his ears. His ears are right underneath the feathers here, close to his head, and they're shaped like bananas. So they're an opening right on the side of his head, shaped like bananas. One ear is higher on one side than the other. And that's really important because they'll be able to hear what's above them, below them, to their left or their right. And then, then they'll be able to pinpoint exactly where their prey is coming from. So owls sometimes get the nickname that they are wise, right? Have you guys ever heard as wise as an owl? And that's because they usually sit very still and listen. So that's why people call them wise because they do a lot of listening. But screech owls also make a very loud noise at night. That's how they get their name, Eastern Screech Owl. So let's see if he'll make a noise. If I make their call, let's see if he calls back. Are you guys ready? So it sounds like, sometimes it sounds like a horse's whinny. It sounds like this. Has anyone heard that in their backyards at night? I've heard it in my backyard and it does sound like a horse's whinny. Sometimes they make different noises that sound more like a screech. And we hear them a lot in the forest at the refuge too. So luckily on Long Island, this species of animal is not endangered. 
which means that it's doing very well. It's population, and there are lots of them across Long Island. Of course, there are things we can do to help <laughs> wild animals, but we are very grateful that this Eastern Screech Owl is doing really well on Long Island. And I know I saw a lot of our friends in the chat said they are so cute and I agree, but they are predators and we love to teach that even though they're so cute, this type of owl should never be kept as a pet. They should always be wild animals. And we take care of our Eastern screech owl because unfortunately, when he was in the wild, he was hit by a car and he had some damage to his eyesight. So he can't see as well as he used to in the wild and he can't hunt on his own. So that's why we take care of him and we feed him every day. We give him fresh water. And it is sad, but we're happy that he's alive and that he can teach people about other screech owls. So most owls wake up at night. They are nocturnal. Screech owls are also nocturnal. What do they do during the day? Screech owls during the daytime, they'll actually go into the inside of a tree. So if you hold up your hand like this in a fist, they will actually go into a tree cavity, a hole in a tree that's about the size of your fist. So if you look around your backyard or if you look on um, in the forest when you're on a hike and you see a hole in a tree that could be made by a woodpecker, it could be made on um, made by a fallen tree branch, a screech owl needs a cavity in a tree to survive. So they will actually lay their eggs in the inside of a tree, hatch their babies and sleep on the inside of a tree cavity. So some things that we can do to help screech owls in the wild is if you notice your backyard doesn't have any of those cavities in, in, your, in trees, you can put up a nest box that's made specifically for Eastern screech owls. So you can either build one um, or you can buy one and screech owls will move in and they'll nest there. And again, they'll sleep during the daytime. Our screech owl is awake right now to meet all of you. And then right when I put him back into his enclosure, his carrier, he'll go right back to sleep. Thank you. I didn't know that's how you'd do it. I would have done that. It wouldn't have bothered you. No. Um, screech owls like this guy, he is a gray screech. Um, and they can be found in two different color phases. So how did he survive when yeah. he got um um, her from a car? Great question. So when he was found, he was actually found by someone who was driving along the roadside. So they might have seen him on the side of the road and knew he needed help. They brought him to a wildlife rehabilitator and which is like a veterinarian for wildlife. And mm -hmm. afterwards, he mm -hmm. was given lots of care. Um, just like when we're sick and we have to go to the doctor, they might have given him some vitamins, extra food, extra water. And after that, um, he went through tests like like you all at school. When you move to a new grade, you take a test at the end of the year, maybe. Right. And then you go to the next grade. Well, for our screech owl, he took a test to see if he could find his own food. And unfortunately, he couldn't hunt on his own. And that's why he has to live in human care or in captivity to survive. So luckily he did survive. We're really um, grateful for that. We have two screech owls. Um, this, as I was saying, is a gray phase, but screech owls can also be born in red colored feathers. So this is a gray screech or a brownish gray. And, and um, other screech owls can be born with more reddish brown feathers. And it doesn't mean that they're a girl or a boy. It just means just like our hair, we can be born with brown hair or blonde hair. Doesn't mean we're a girl or a boy. That's the same for screech owls. It just depends on their genetics and how, when they're born. And it's hard to tell a boy from a girl in most bird of prey species. So even eagles, eagles, owls, it's impossible to tell who is the girl and who's the boy just by looking at their feathers. But you can tell if you see two birds next to each other, the larger bird is usually the female 
or is usually the girl. So that's how you can tell the girls are much bigger um, because they need to sit on the eggs to hatch them. They need to find good food for their babies and it takes a lot more energy. And I see a great question. What happens if it snows? What do they do? So our animals that we have in our animal enclosures, they, uh, they are totally built for our environment. So because they live here in the wild, they can survive really low temperatures and when it snows. So um, for our animals, when it snows, we'll clear out spaces for them and clean off all their perches. And in the wild, a screech owl is totally okay when it snows because again, they're nesting inside of a tree. They'll come out and they can still hunt for their prey. So that was a great question. All right, I am going to put our screech owl right back into his enclosure. And if you do think of any questions, you can always ask them in the chat and then we can get back to them. So our, our bird that is calling a lot, you hear him, he's saying, who, who is coming out next? So you might hear lots of noises from him as he comes out to meet you all. All right, so our, our great horned owl is very chatty today. Let's see if he'll talk to you guys. So this is Hooter. He's our great horned owl and he is very talkative at this time of year. You guys can wave hello if you'd like. Hi Hooter. <laughs> he was kind of waving back to you all. But our great horned owl has a very special story that I'll start with or why we take care of him. And you can see he's not shy, right? He's talking to you guys and saying hello. Our great horned owl, when he was a baby, when he was um, an owlet, a baby owl is called an owlet, he fell from his nest maybe too early and someone found him in the forest. And instead of bringing him to a wildlife rehabilitator or a wildlife hospital, unfortunately they thought, and maybe they thought it was a good idea, they brought him home and took care of him like they would take care of a pet. Do you guys think that was a good idea? No, right? Because owls and other wildlife are never, should never be kept as pets. So unfortunately, because Hooter, Hooter was such a young bird, he became really used to people and he's imprinted on people. So that just means that he never got a chance to learn from his mom and dad owl how to be an owl. So now he is really used to being around people. He talks to us. He knows that we bring him food. And unfortunately, he can't go back into the wild because he will always find people for food. So after Hooter was taken away from the family that kept him as a pet because it is not allowed, right? It's illegal to have any wild animal as a pet. Um, for our great horned owl, he went to the Queens College Nature Center, and then he came to us at the Quag Wildlife Refuge, where he's lived for a really long time. And our great horned owl is over 20 years old. He's probably around 23 or 24 years mm. old. Mm. And the mm. oldest great horned owl in captivity is around 50 years old. So Hooter is around middle-aged, right? And he's a great animal ambassador who people can learn about great horned owls now. So we're really lucky to have Hooter. Great horned owls are actually one of the biggest predators in the forest. So you can see he has the same big ear tufts that the screech owl has, except Hooter's much bigger than the screech owl. But if you take a look at his feathers, I think our great horned owl looks just like our screech owl, except 
10 times bigger. So they live in the same environment. They camouflage in tree bark and forests, mm -hmm. but because they're such mm -hmm. a big bird, mm -hmm. they don't go onto the inside of trees. They actually sit out on trees and they'll nest um, in a crow's nest or an osprey nest. And these birds are also built for our mm -hmm. habitats. Mm -hmm. So some of you may have learned about hibernation, adaptation, and migration. Those are three things that animals do to either survive the winter or um, to, during their year, right? They'll either migrate, they'll go to a warmer place, they'll adapt, they'll have these warm feathers or fur, or they'll hibernate. And that means they'll go to, they'll rest for the whole winter. So our great mm. horned owl mm. and all of the birds that we're going to meet today, they adapt to their habitats. So they get these beautiful feathers on their feet that help them survive in the winter. They do not migrate. So they stay on Long Island all year round. And they have these beautiful feathers on their whole body. Can you guys see how many feathers Hooter has? And if you watch my finger disappear until I touch his body, can you guys see? So I'll try it again so you can see. My finger stops when it touches his body. That's how much feathers he has. So check it out, he has a lot of feathers. And that is like wearing a big winter jacket. So that keeps mm. them really warm. Mm. Mm. And great horned owls can stay out in temperatures up to negative 40 degrees. So they are totally fine out in the winter. And when it snows, they have these built-in little Ugg boots, right? They have those feathers on their feet and they're right next to their talons. And they still hunt lots of different things. They'll hunt rabbits, squirrels. They'll eat mice and rats. Um, they will also eat skunks. So do you guys think they have a good sense of smell? No, right? They don't have a good sense of smell at all if they're eating skunks. And they will also hunt for other birds sometimes. So they'll mm. even eat other great mm. horned mm. owls. So they are really good predators. And again, they have this curved beak. I'll hold him a little bit closer so you can see. So that's perfect for eating their food. Talons that help him catch his food. And just like our screech owl, they have excellent hearing. So at home, I want you, or at, in school, if you guys take your thumb and your index finger and rub it together next to your ear, can you hear that tiny little noise your fingers make? A great horned owl can hear this noise across a basketball court. Mm. So they have mm. amazing mm. hearing. And they also have great vision. So our eyes, I want you guys um, where you are, you can hold your head nice and still and move your eyes up and down and side to side. You're doing something that an owl can never do. An owl's eyes are actually stuck facing forward in their head. So they are held in place by an orbital ring. And I actually have a skull of a great horned owl that I wanted to show you. So their eyes can't move up and down. They actually have to turn their head to, to um, see around their body. But this is a great horned owl skull. And this is the eye ring that holds their cone-shaped eye in place. So to see around the side of their body, they have to turn their neck. Can you guys turn your neck for me to the side? We can turn our neck from side to side a great horned owl out of 360 degrees in a circle, they can turn their head 270 degrees. So they can't turn their head all the way around, but they can turn their head almost all the way around. Humans can only turn our necks 180 degrees, right? In a straight line. Mm. So good job for trying that, right? And owls have extra vertebrae in their neck that allow them to do that. But we talked a little bit about how many feathers our great horned owl is covered in. So I wanted you guys, while I talk about a few things, you can try to think in your head, how much does our great horned owl weigh? So how heavy is he? 
and he is a boy. I did see some questions. It looks like he is a dad and he is a boy owl. So you can think in your, in your head, how heavy is our great horned owl? He is, are you guys ready? He is actually two and a half pounds. Mm. So two and a half pounds, that's really lightweight for an animal, right? Because they do have to fly and they have to be lightweight to fly around the forest. So our great horned owl is really light, but all owls and all birds to fly have hollow bones. So that allows them to be very lightweight. Um, there are some birds that don't have hollow bones. Can anyone think of one? Penguins don't have hollow bones. They can't fly, right? Exactly. So owls, when they eat their food, they will use their talons to catch their prey and they'll use their beak, but they can't mm. cut up their food like we can with a fork and a knife. So they have, they end up eating little pieces of their food. They'll also sometimes eat a mouse whole. They'll eat the whole mouse and they'll have to regurgitate or throw up the fur and the bones in an owl pellet. Has anyone heard of that, an owl pellet? Maybe you've even dissected owl pellets um, in school, but owl pellets just look like mm. a fur ball. So if anyone has a cat that grooms themselves, um, owls will regurgitate a big fur ball every single day of the fur the, of the prey that they ate and the bones. So they can't digest it. And it actually is so cool. So you can learn what an animal was eating by looking at the owl pellet. So you can learn if they were eating mice or rats or maybe birds in a certain area. So those things are all really exciting. And that's a great way for scientists to learn if an animal is healthy mm -hmm. or if a habitat is healthy too. I think it's pretty smart as well. All right, we had some good guesses. Some people thought he was five pounds. Um, we get a lot of guesses when we go into schools of maybe he's a hundred pounds or 50 pounds which is uh, pretty amazing, right? If you saw a cat, maybe that was this big, mm. it would be around 20 pounds. All right. So our great horned owl though, he is mostly blind. He can't see anymore. Um, and he's been with us for a very long time. So luckily he's really used to his enclosure. He's used to coming out with us on programs. And I did wanna show you all one thing that's really cool. If you take a look at Hooter's tail, do you see how he'll use his tail to balance? Mm. 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 And then he'll also use his wings. So if you listen, we can see to listen. Mm. Mm. Owls have silent flight and on the edge of their feathers, they have a comb. So this is a feather from a great horned owl. Can you guys see the fringe on the side that's closest to my face? That is how owls have silent flight. That fringe on this softens the air and it, their feathers make no noise when they fly. So that is a great way to sneak up on their prey. So pretty cool, right? Owls have silent flight. Other birds like geese and eagles, this is an eagle feather. Can you guys see how it's so shiny? And they make a lot of noise when they fly. So they don't have silent flight. All right, great job. So I am going to, we have another bird to meet and then I think we can take some questions. So if you do have a question that you can't type into the chat, just try to remember it. And then maybe at the end, we can take some questions after our next animal. All right, so bye Hooter. Can you guys wave goodbye to Hooter? Mm -hmm. 
All right. So this bird is very different from the owls that we met before. This bird is a type of hawk. And I'm going to show you just when I stand back, I'm going to turn him around. Does anyone know what kind of hawk this is? And he is really big. And this is why I have our biggest glove on. So you can see that protects my arm from his talons. So this is a hawk that you can see around your backyard driving to school. This is called a red tailed hawk. And they're called that because they have a red tail. So check out that red tail. That's how they get their name. They will fly up in the sky and you'll usually be able to see just a rusty red tail. But this is a bird, of course, that is a bird of prey. So they are hunters just like the owls, except they don't come out at night. They come out during the daytime. So when an animal comes out during the day, it's called diurnal. Can you guys say that? Diurnal. Diurnal animals will hunt during the daytime. And we noticed on our owls that they have very big eyes that help them see at night. Um, they have those big ears and ears that are on the side of their head to help them hear at night. But red-tailed hawks, they are, look very different from the owls because they hunt during the day. So our red-tailed hawk, he's looking behind us, but you can see that his eyes are on the sides of his face, right? Instead of facing forward like the owls. And you might also notice that he looks like he has a he looks like he's a little angry. A lot of people think that red-tailed hawks look angry. What do you guys think? Do, do they look happy or angry? And some people think they look angry, but they're really not. They just have a built-in visor or a built-in shield from the sun. So if you guys ever, when you're playing sports or when you're out on the beach, if you wear a hat in the sunshine that shades out your eyes, just like my hand is doing, that is what a red-tailed hawk has built in with this brow bone over their face. So they, you can see that, that brow bone that shields his eye from the sun, and that's really good help when they're hunting high up in the sky. They can see, usually they can see a mouse from about a mile into the sky. So they have great vision. If you were a red-tailed hawk, you could read a book across a football field. So if you were a red-tailed hawk, you'd have the eyesight to read a book across a football field. So they have excellent vision and that helps them find their food. Usually they like to eat rabbits and squirrels, mice, rats. They prefer to eat usually small mammals. Mm -hmm. So red-tailed hawks, they also have this pale belly and they have a dark brown back. And that is called counter shading. So in the, in the environment, you might see predators that have a dark back and a, a light belly, and that helps them hunt for their food. It actually helps them camouflage in plain sight. So has anyone heard of a great white shark? I bet you have. Great white sharks have counter shading, just like a red-tailed hawk. They have a pale belly and a dark back. So when a red tail when a red-tailed hawk is up in the sky, if there was another animal above them, say an eagle, and the eagle was looking down, he would see the, the red-tailed hawk's dark brown back and the ground, which might be dark brown, to help him camouflage. But if there was an animal on the ground, like maybe a mouse or a rabbit that was looking into the sky, it would see the bright sun and a white belly. So that would help him camouflage to his prey, which is pretty amazing. It is like air camouflage, right? It's like camouflage when you're in the middle of the open. So red-tailed hawks are red-tailed hawk. This guy, unfortunately, the reason why we have him, he was also injured by a car. So can you guys see the wing that's furthest away from me? It's called a drooping wing. And unfortunately, when he was hit by a car, his bones were fractured, but they heal really quickly and it didn't heal in the right position. So now his wing hangs down a little bit. 
And unfortunately, he can't fly up into the sky. He can only fly short distances across his enclosure. And that's why he can't find his own food in the wild. So he wouldn't be able to go up into the sky and find his food. And that's why we take care of him. But he's an amazing bird. Can you guys see just how beautiful he is? And uh, they, they are really cool animals. Red-tailed hawks are one of my favorite birds because you see them pretty often on Long Island. And if you take a look and you see a bird sitting maybe up on a post or along the roadside on telephone poles, it's probably a red-tailed hawk. And red-tailed hawks, one thing that we can do to help them, because they hunt along the road, they're sometimes called roadside raptors because it's a good spot for them to find food. But one thing we can do if you're with mom and dad, you can, we can, oops, sorry. So that's just called baiting from the glove. So when he gets a little nervous, he might jump from the glove. But see how he's sitting nice and comfy now? So when red-tailed hawks are along the roadside, it is really important that we drive carefully, but also that we clean up our roads and make sure that we don't have trash along the side of the road, especially for birds like the red-tailed hawk, um, because if there is trash or even banana peels and apple cores, those things will attract mice and rats. And we know that red-tailed hawks eat mice and rats, right? So as long as we clean up our roads and we don't throw even compostable things like apple cores onto the side of the road, we won't be attracting small animals that red-tailed hawks will be hunting. So that is really cool. And also, I'm sure some of you all have seen osprey around, which is another type of, it's called a fish hawk. So hawks and osprey and eagles, they are finally making a comeback on Long Island after a long time of not being seen here. So maybe 40 years ago uh, in, or 50 years ago, in, um, there weren't very common, actually there weren't many red-tailed hawks and osprey due to a chemical, a chemical that was sprayed in the environment called DDT. So this chemical was really good at killing mosquitoes. Do you think that was a good idea, right? Not a lot of people like mosquitoes. So they sprayed this chemical in marshes, they sprayed it in bays and sometimes even swimming pools. And they did a great job of killing mosquito eggs, but unfortunately it, the, uh, when fish would eat a mosquito egg that had this chemical in it, it would get inside of the fish. And when a hawk or an osprey ate the fish, this chemical would get bigger and bigger up the food chain. That's called biomagnification. So it just means that this chemical was inside of the bodies of the predators. And because of that, for at least for hawks and eagles and ospreys, the chemical didn't allow them to lay strong eggs. So for birds like the red-tailed hawk, when they would lay an egg and sit on the egg, it would crack and they couldn't have any babies because of this chemical. But in, in the 1970s, people realized what was happening. They realized that this chemical was causing birds to decline, especially predator birds and they were able to ban the chemical, which means it's not around anymore. And now birds are doing a great job coming back and they're healthier than ever. We see lots of osprey. Has anyone seen eagles around? We've seen some eagles around our pond. I see some hands up. That's great. So um, I think that story is really encouraging because it shows us just how important it is for every animal to be in the environment, even bugs. So bugs like mosquitoes are food for other animals. Without bugs, we wouldn't have animals that are at the top of the food chain like red-tailed hawks. So our red-tailed hawk, you, when, you, when he flew, you may have heard his wings. Did anyone hear his wings? They're a lot louder than our great horned owl. And that's okay because he doesn't have to have silent flight. All right, so our red-tailed hawk, 
he lives outside. You can actually come and visit him when you come visit the wildlife refuge. He lives in a corner enclosure that you can come and visit anytime from sunrise to sunset. You can come visit him. And he's pretty fun because he'll make a lot of noise, especially during the springtime. He calls a lot. He makes a lot of really cool noises. All right, I am gonna put our red-tailed hawk right in his enclosure. I'll be right back on screen and we can take some questions. Okay. Oh, I see someone's favorite birds are hawks. Awesome. Very cool. And I do see a few questions. The refuge is in the town of Quag. So that's why it's called the Quag Wildlife Refuge. And we are in between West Hampton and South Hampton. We're about 10 minutes away from Riverhead. So we're probably pretty close to your school. All right, and uh, that's a, thank you for asking that question. Um, how did I learn all of these things? And that's a great question. I love to read, so I, I read a lot of articles and books, and I went to school for environmental studies. So I went to Stony Brook University and I studied environmental science. And then here at the refuge, I always think there's a lot of things to learn every season. You might see something new, and that is always a good excuse to look it up and read lots of articles. And a great question from Allison, what do hawks do in the wintertime? Some hawks, like the osprey, they migrate. So they go to a warmer place like Costa Rica and Florida because there's not as much food here for them in the wintertime. But for the red-tailed hawks, the one that we just met, our, our red-tailed hawks, they stay on Long Island all year round. So they adapt. Great, and then JP, do we have any foxes there? And we do have fox here, which is really cool. We have red fox, one that we take care of in our animal enclosures. And we also have wild fox that are out in the forest. And um, we have actually seen a lot of an animal tracks from red fox this year. So that was really exciting because you never see them, they're very shy, but we saw a lot of animal tracks and a lot of scat and scat just means poop. So we saw a lot of red fox poop out on the trails this year. And another question from Avery, why would someone think that keeping a wild bird as a pet is a good idea? That's a great question. And I think what had happened, at least in many of the birds that we have, uh, people thought that they were doing the right thing maybe and they didn't know that they were actually hurting the birds by keeping them as a pet. Um, so it is important that any animal, turtles, birds, um, frogs, all of those should be left out in the wild. And it's very important that we don't keep them as pets. And that we can, we can tell our friends, we can tell our family and we, spreading the word and, and educating is really important, right? Okay, and Anderson, great question. Do we have any eagles here? And we have seen bald eagles flying over the pond, wild bald eagles. So they're around Long Island, which is so cool. So you might see them anywhere. I've seen them in Riverhead, I've seen them in Aquabog and here at the refuge, but we don't have any eagles that we take care of in our animal enclosures. And the lifespan of a red-tailed hawk Another great question. They can live up to 30 years in captivity. So they have a nice long lifespan. Oh yeah, and Emma, great question. How do owls hoot or who without moving their beak? And they have a voice box. So they, they don't actually move their beak. They just use their voice box to communicate with each other and make their calls. And a great question from Justin, do we have any parrots? We don't have any parrots. 
And do the birds go outside for fresh air? And yes, actually all of our birds live outdoors. Um, so all of the birds that you met today, they live in our outdoor wildlife enclosure. So there are, it is fenced in to keep them safe, but it's open to the fresh air. So they go, are able to live a really natural life in their enclosures. And Kayla, how long are owl legs? That's a good question. It depends on the owl. It, um, smaller owls, like our screech owls, their legs might be as long as your thumb. For the great horned owls, they're a little bit longer since they're a bigger bird. So maybe their legs are four inches or five inches long. They're hidden by all of those feathers, but they are actually very long legs. And what do great horned owls do? Good question. They, um, animals just like people, they are looking for food, for shelter, for their family, right? They will breed and have chicks. So that's what they do. A great question too. Um, how can fox or why can they laugh like humans? That's a good question. They can bark and they make some cool noises to communicate with each other. I haven't heard our fox that we take care of laugh, but I know they make some really crazy noises sometimes mm -hmm. in the forest. Mm -hmm. And um, from Jackie, how many hawks are in the wild on Long Island now? And that's a really good question. So red-tailed hawks, they are not endangered. So they're doing very well on Long Island. And it's hard to say how many of them there are, but um, scientists will do studies and they'll count bird species. So that's a great question that I don't know the answer to for a number, but it's a thing that we can definitely research. And um, do we have any golden eagles? We don't, I thought I saw one over our pond a few months ago, but we don't have any that we take care of, but they do come to Long Island um, in the winter time usually. And Tammy, oh, I'm sorry, Devin, how many small birds do we have at the wildlife refuge? Probably hundreds. So now is um, a good time birds are migrating and they're coming to Long Island and then through Long Island on their migration to go northward in the spring. So there could be hundreds, if not thousands of birds around. And uh, if anyone has binoculars, you can use those to try to get to see what kind of birds are around. And you can come to the wildlife refuge, even though our nature center is closed. The trails are open every single day from sunrise to sunset. You can come at any time to visit and it's always free to visit. So even though our nature center is closed to the public right now, everything else is open. We don't have any gray foxes. We do have snakes. And our red-tailed hawk that I um, just had out, he's probably around 15 to 20 years old. We don't know exactly how old he is. Uh, you guys have some great animal questions though. We don't have any fennec foxes and um, great horned owls are considered an apex predator that, well, they are at the top of the food chain. Apex predators are at the very top, like orca whales and great, uh, great white sharks. So if we think of great horned owls in our habitats, they could be an apex predator. Um, but in different ecosystems, they might not be considered an apex predator. All right. And Natalie, um, awesome question. How many different species of owls are there? That is an awesome question. So on Long Island, we see the great horned owl, the, the snowy, the barred owl, the barn owl, short-eared owl, long-eared owl, screech owl. There are a lot of owl species and the northern saw wet owl. In the world, there are 200 owl species. Great question. We don't allow camping here. So it's just a nature park that you can come and visit during the daytime. The largest bird that we have, um, Alea, is the great horned owl that I, that I showed you and the red-tailed hawk. They're around the same size. 
And Ariana, the biggest animal that a hawk can eat? Great question. I would say they don't like to eat really big animals because they could get hurt, but um, they would eat maybe a rabbit or a possum, a small raccoon. That would be a little bit big for them, but um, around that size, so small mammals. And Ryan, um, the snakes that we take care of, we have the corn snake, the ball pythons, um, and that's, I think, answers Anderson's question too. We have African ball pythons. And uh, in the forest, though, there are lots of different native snakes, like gardener snakes and ringneck snakes. We have seen bluebirds here. Excellent. And, and can owls eat other owls? Yes, they can eat other owls. And sometimes they are territorial, which means that they, uh, they will set up a territory and they don't want other owls around because they don't want to lose their nest or their um, prey, their food, right? And uh, Jilly, do we have any cranes? We, um, we don't have any cranes, but if you see in the painting beside me, there's, that's a great blue heron. They're related to cranes and we see them a lot at the refuge. Um, we see them out in the preserve. And Logan, how do we feed the animals? That's a really good question. Um, all of our animals are injured wildlife. So they don't eat food that's alive. All of their food is prepared for them. So one of our staff, um, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's my coworkers, will go into the animal cages, will prepare all their food. We actually weigh their food to make sure that it's the right amount for them. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring it into their enclosure, we'll clean, pick up yesterday's food, and then give them fresh water and put down their food. So that that is how we it usually takes two hours a day to feed the animals. And um, Nathan, we don't, we have seen pigeons at the refuge. Yes, wild pigeons that are called rock doves. Um, so we have seen them, but we don't take care of any pigeons. Uh, and what's a good way to keep hawks out of your yard naturally? So one way is if, um, if you have a statue of an owl, you can put that maybe on the side of your house or up on top of your house. Most hawks don't want to be around a big owl like the great horned owl. That's how most people keep away smaller birds that they might not want around. And then um, Pamela, we do have frogs. Jess, we have two great horned owls two barred owls and two screech owls. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you, Ms. Fernandez, okay. but uh, this has been an amazing experience. I, I got some great pictures and uh, we want to thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing your animals with us. Everybody say thank you. Uh, give a big wave to the animals and to Ms. Fernandez. And uh, we are just so appreciative of you taking the time. So thank you, thank you to our PTO for sponsoring and uh, I hope that we will definitely get to visit again uh, in soon, either virtually or in person. Sounds great, thank you guys. All right, take Bye. care.